composing rhythms with the mapping generators. The sequencer as a special source of sound. Self-oscillating filters. Phase modulation versus phase distortion. Modifying presets and patches. Welcome to part 4 of my series about Brazil's presets and patches. Today I'm going to talk about the preset Morph Between Four Oscillators by Andreas Meisel. The sound consists of five main components. Four of them are based on the four oscillators, each component on one of the oscillators, meaning the oscillators don't interact. Sound component number 5 is produced by filtered white noise with the filter being modulated by the sequencer. Switching between these five components, the well-known pattern occurs. Let me demonstrate what each of the components contribute to the sound before I'll talk about how the four oscillators are switched on and off and how the fifth component, the white noise, is implemented to it. To find out when and how oscillator 1 is switched on and off, therefore I remove all the cables which don't concern oscillator 1. I end up with this patch. The output volume is at maximum, but the volume's modulation is at minus 100, meaning that any modulating signal can mute the oscillator's output completely. The modulating signal comes via the rectifier from the first multiplex, which is patched as a simple mixer. The mixer's input signals are generated by the two mapping generators, MAP1 and MAP2. Let's forget about the rectifier for a moment and look at the graph. We see that every positive signal from any of the mapping generators dims or mutes the output of oscillator 1. Only when both mapping generators send negative signals or signals with a level of about zero, the resulting modulation of the volume is zero and therefore the volume is at maximum. Increasing or decreasing the positive level of a signal from the mapping generators means 
fading in and fading out the modulation of the volume and fading out and fading in the volume of oscillator 1 itself. I turn down the speed of LFO2 to prove this by watching the mapping generators work and listening to the results. The graph shows the goings on once again, while the sequencer is playing and I increase the speed of LFO2 slowly to the original speed in the patch. But what about the rectifier? Why is the rectifier inserted between the multiplex and the volumes modulation knob? Well, there is a small amount of negative signals drawn in the mapping generator number one, perhaps by chance. This little hollow must not lead to an audible output of oscillator one. Routing the modulating signal through the rectifier changes the negative hollow to a small positive null, not causing the oscillator's volume to go up. I admit, the influence is minimal, up to no influence at all. And as smoothing the hollow out doesn't change the sound either, I think inserting the rectifier isn't necessary for this patch and maybe a remnant from an older one. By the way, I talked about the rectifier in a previous video of this series already. Indeed, it was the last video, patch analysis number three. Please excuse me for not explaining every single function, even if it is really important for the preset or patch, which I talked about in an earlier patch analysis already. My regular viewers would get bored otherwise. But, of course, feel free to ask. I will answer your questions for sure and with delight. Some words about the mapping generators now. The mapping generators deliver a value dependent in amount and polarity on the direction and height of the drawn columns. You can choose a lot of options concerning the drawn values and uh, the number of columns by right-clicking in the area of the mapping window. As this video is a patch analysis and uh, not a general tutorial about Bazil's functions, I just choose 128 columns and don't talk about the rest of the options. Please consult the manual or send me your questions. I connect the drawn map with the modulation knob of the pitch to demonstrate the different map modes. Increment lets the mapping generator jump from, columns, from, from column to column, uh, what is from drawn value to drawn value with every new MIDI note. Key lets you program a key follow of your own fantasy. The two modes, Map Smooth and Map Quantize, need a chosen source to let the mapping generator jump from column to column. In our preset, uh, the source is LFO2. So let me choose it here as well. I hit a key on my MIDI controller and play around with the LFO's rate a bit. <laughs> Mm. 
Back to the preset and patch I am analyzing. Let's have a look at how the output of oscillator 2 is switched on and off or faded in and out. I have removed all cables which don't belong to oscillator 2 and which don't influence its sound or volume. The basic differences to the patching of oscillator 1 are the volume is completely turned down, there is the plus 5 volt DC offset engaged and the multiplexes output is modulated by mapping generator 1. As all input signals are connected to the left hand inputs, multiplex 2 is patched as a ring modulator. But let me continue the analysis by looking at the block diagram of the oscillator's patching. The knob modulating the volume of oscillator 2 is turned to the left to minus 100, meaning a positive modulating signal doesn't change anything, whereas a negative modulating signal increases the output volume of the oscillator. Plus 5 volt DC offset is inverted to minus 5 volt and then added to the signal of mapping generator 2. As the maximum positive value generated by the mapping generators is plus 5 volt, the sum of the signals from mapping generator 2 and the inverter is zero or a minus value, always. To prove this, I set up a patch summing up mapping generator 2 and the inverted plus 5 volt and try different positive values generated by mapping generator 2. At a maximum positive value of the mapping generator, the multiplexes output should be plus 5 volt minus 5 volt, resulting in zero, resulting, not out, uh, resulting in no output volume. Well, proved. The signal from mapping generator 1 multiplies with this discussed sum of mapping generator 2 and the inverter. It multiplies because that is exactly what ring modulation does. In other words, the inputs of the multiplexes are faded in or out depending on the value coming from mapping generator 1. Fading in means sending a negative value to the modulation knob of the oscillator's volume, meaning turning up the volume. Fading out means the opposite. As the sum of the left-hand inputs is zero when the signal from mapping generator 2 is at plus 5 volt, the volume of the oscillator is only turned up when the signal coming from mapping gener generator 1 is positive and the signal from mapping generator 2 is less than plus 100%, meaning less than plus 5 volt. Let me prove this as well. Alright. Let's go back to the original patching of oscillator 2 and watch the two mapping generators in action. I decrease the speed of LFO2 again to make it easier to follow the goings on. Oscillator 3 then. Well, the patching of oscillator 3, as far as it concerns the mapping generators, is exactly the opposite to the previously discussed mapping of oscillator 2. The mapping generators 1 and 2 have only switched their position. Everything we have discovered talking about oscillator 2 is, well, upside down. The volume of oscillator 3 is only turned up when the signal coming from mapping generator 2 is positive and the signal from mapping gener generator 1 is less than plus 
100%, meaning less than plus 5 volts. Let's watch it again. Oscillator 4. The volume is turned down to zero, but the modulation of the volume is at plus 100%, meaning that every positive signal reaching the modulation jack will turn the volume up. Oscillator 4 needs positive signals from the multiplexes output to be heard. Mapping generator 2 is connected to the multiplexes modulation jack and mapping generator 1 is connected to its left hand input, meaning the signal from mapping generator 1 is faded in by the signal from mapping generator 2. Meaning if mapping generator 2 delivers a positive signal while mapping generator 1 is sending a positive signal as well, this positive signal from mapping generator 1 is sent to the modulation jack of the volume turning the oscillator's output volume up. In other words, if both mapping generators deliver signals with a positive level higher than, than zero, we can hear oscillator 4 working. Let's just watch and prove that. White noise, sequencer, filter, envelope 3 now. The adjustments of filter 3 are placed at the tweaks and FX page. Input 2 of filter 3 is used for inserting white noise and input 1 is connected to the sequencer's rightmost output. It's step number 4. And there is a second cable leading from that output to seemingly nowhere, or better said, to the input of the lag generators. Although the lag generators are not used at all in this patch. This last mentioned lonely cable isn't really needed in this patch. The sequencer, uh, the sequencer triggers envelope 3, as the diagram shows. To achieve that, it is not sufficient to choose this option from the envelope trigger menu. The output jack of the chosen sequencer tab must be connected to something, to anything, to make the chosen tab valid for triggering the envelope. As the output jack of the relevant tab is already connected to filter 3, the lonely cable to the lag generators isn't actually needed anymore. But it's nice to have it already patched, because I'm going to remove the connection between the sequencer and the filter in a moment. I disconnect the sequencer from the filter now. What remains is the filtered white noise only. But the sequencer is still working and is still engaged in the patch. The sequencer is still triggering the filter. I change that as well. Now it's really only the filtered noise we hear and we hear it as long as a note is played because the envelope is not longer triggered by the sequencer. The filter's cutoff is still modulated by envelope 3 of course and increasing sustain demonstrates that nicely. Well, let me investigate the other, the second part of the percussive sound. The sequencer is not only triggering the envelope, but also sending an audible signal to the filter itself. 
I let the sequencer trigger the envelope again and reconnect the sequencer's rightmost output with the filter's input again. At least I disconnect the white noise. To make it clear, the sequencer is not triggering any LFO or oscillator or other sound generator. The sequencer's signal itself is generating sound right now. And whereas the velocity adjusted with the sequencer's sliders wasn't important so far and the mere fact of being turned up to the positive um, um, or being turned down to the negative was the only thing of interest, it is different now. It is indeed important for this second part of the percussive sound, for this contribution of the sequencer's signal itself, what velocity is adjusted. Let me demonstrate that. By the way, the sliders of step 7 and step 9 are not at zero, as you may have thought, but at plus 14. Every time when there is a difference in the value of the sliders from one step to the next step, the sequencer creates an audible impulse. When two or more consecutive steps have the same value, there is no audible impulse generated. Last thing to mention about the sequencer is its doubled speed. Well, it's time to talk about filter 3. I won't go too deep into the matter of the filter, because there will be other patches to analyze later in this series, patches which are based on filter tricks more than our actual one. And I want to have some time to talk about rhythm in this video. So, only a rough draft of some aspects concerning the filter now. I remove all inputs at first. No white noise and no signal from the sequencer is fed into the filter now, but, seek, but the sequencer still modulates the filter's cutoff frequency. We see and hear that the filter is oscillating. To prove this even better, I remove the cutoffs modulation and the sequencer doesn't have any influence now. The cutoff frequency determines the frequency of the filter's self oscillation. Back to the original cutoff frequency and back to modulating the cutoff by envelope 3 and the sequencer. I reduce the sequencer speed and turn all the sliders down, all but one. We see the positive pulse with a short decay when the cutoff opens at reaching the sequencer's turned up slider. The wave of the oscillating filter is then modulated by the sequencer's pulses fed into the filter. I demonstrate that by feeding a sine wave into the filter. Please notice what happens when I turn the input gain up and down. Well, enough of the filter for today. It's not our main matter in this patch or this video. There will be a lot more about the filters later in this series, as I have said. But back to the whole original patch. The basic idea, the main thing is rhythm. Rhythm made by the patching of the mapping generators. And starting with this video, this fourth patch analysis, I'm going to deal with the question, what else can we do with the patch? Meaning today, how can we change the rhythm and later the sound of each element of the rhythm? The mapping generators generate 128 values per cycle in this patch, each value represented by a column. They are triggered by LFO2. This LFO is adjusted at a rate of one bar. The waveform is saw up. Therefore, the 128 columns of each mapping generator correspond to one bar. We come to the equation 128 columns corresponds to one bar, what is 16 sixteenth notes, 
One sixteenth note's note is represented by eight columns. A quarter note is represented by 32 columns and so on. All right. With the relationships, which we discussed earlier in this video and which are given in the patch information, we can start making rhythms of our own now. First, I set all values of the mapping generators to zero using the reset function of the context menu. The context menu opens by right-clicking somewhere in the mapping generator window. According to what we have found out and what is written in the patch information, we hear only oscillator 1 now. Let me make a test first, before it comes to real rhythms. I want oscillator 2 to step in at the first 16th note of the second half of the bar, which is the ninth 16th note, of course, in the whole bar. According to my calculations, I have to increase the values of columns 65 to 72. By clicking at a, uh, at a column, the data display shows the number of the columns. I don't have to count 64 columns. So, Okay, let me try. And indeed, I get what I wanted to. I want to replace oscillator 2 by oscillator 4. I have to increase the values of column number 65 to 62, uh, 72 of mapping generator 2 as well. But I want oscillator 4 to hit at the end of the first half of the bar instead of the beginning of the second half. So I have to shift the columns one sixteenth note what is eight columns to the left. Well, nice so far, but let me draw in some real rhythms, taking into account that the four oscillators deliver not only different sounds, but also different frequencies, meaning different notes. I'm going to talk about the sounds of the oscillators a little later in this video. Here is a draft of the first rhythm I'm going to make with the patch. Don't worry about the names of the notes. The real notes depend, of course, on the note you are playing, but the draft shows the pitch relations between the notes, even if they are not exactly those of keyboard notes, as the oscillators are a bit detuned. We will see that later. By the way, you can download all the drafts and graphs in this video from my website www.rofilm-media.net. Of course, for free. And here is the rhythm made with a modified patch. <laughs> And the last one. Well, it's time to talk about each oscillator itself, about the individual sounds. The pitch of oscillator 1 is tuned up by 5 half tones plus 5 cents, or in other words, oscillator 1 um, is detuned against a perfect fourth by 5 cents. There are two main mechanisms working on the sound, phase distortion and fractalization. So, phase distortion, PD, first. Before I talk about Basil's functionality concerning PD, I'd like to spend some sentences on phase distortion in general. Frequency modulation and phase modulation means one oscillator, called a modulator, modulates the frequency of the phase of another oscillator called the carrier. The frequency and the phase of the two waves are independent from each other. Phase distortion doesn't need two oscillators. Here the carrier, I use this term even here to make it easier to compare with phase modulation, is a sample, let me say a picture of a wave. The modulator takes photographs, snapshots from this sample, this picture, 
at certain times, certain speed, and from certain points of the carrier picture. The modulator is an oscillator, and the modulator's waveform determines the time, speed, when, and the points where both the uh, photographs are taken from. The modulator's circle starts always at the beginning of the carrier sample. So we can say that phase and frequency of the carrier and the modulator are always identical. Well, here is a more precise and more technical draft of the goings-on. The spectrum of a phase-distorted carrier wave compared to the one of a phase or frequency modulated one from the same carrier wave tends to be, let me say, more linear and in some aspects musically much easier to handle. Changing the amount of phase distortion sometimes resembles filter shifts, but without the frequency-dependent phase shift and resonant effects. Therefore, the sound is clear, cold, clean, digital. But to imitate filter resonance, Brazil offers some special wave forms of the modulator, RES 1, 2 and 3. There is a lot of interesting stuff left to talk about, but this is no phase distortion workshop, so back to Brazil and back to our patch. Below the PD knob, which controls the amount of phase distortion, there are three pop-up windows. The lowest one shows the carrier sample, for example cosine, and the upper two ones show the waveform of the modulator. I will keep on using this terminology in this video. There are two upper windows because the modulator wave can consist of two halves in every cycle, of two different halves. With the second window set to same, both halves are identical. You can draw a carrier sample using the mapping generators But in our patch, the carrier sample is a simple cosine wave. The modulator windows offer some more alternatives, including the resonance, uh, the resonant ones mentioned some minutes ago. Well, I have to talk about the second mechanism, fractalization. It is similar to Brazil's phase distortion using one of the resonance waveforms of the modulator. The main difference is that now the signal wave, the wave coming from the upper part of the oscillator panel and not the modulating wave is packed into a loudness envelope and forced to repeat its cycle as often as determined by the right hand fractalization knob. Let me generate a pulse wave and pack it into a triangle window. You will have noticed that Brazil starts the process of fractalization already when switching the pop-up window from off to any of the envelope shapes, even if the right-hand knob is still turned to zero. Let me demonstrate both parts of the sound individually now. Neither face distortion nor fractalization at first, then only face distortion, then only fractalization and then both again. Alright, as the other oscillators, of course, follow the same principles, I can make it quite short. 
Ostinator 2 is tuned up by 17 half tones, what is a whole octave plus a perfect quart, and detuned by 15 cents. Phase distortion is implemented only a little and without using the resonant waves. Fractalization is adjusted at 1.16, what is remarkable but less than at Oscillator 1. Let's listen to each of the components and again the unmodulated sine wave at first, then only phase distortion, followed by only fractalization and at last both together. Oscillator 3 then. Oscillator 3 is turned up by 8 half tones, is tuned up, sorry, by 8 half tones, what is a minor 6, and detuned by 13 cents. Phase distortion is at a high amount and fractalization is set to maximum, resembling the third resonant waveform of the phase distortion unit. Let's listen to each component again. Oscillator 4 at last. Oscillator 4 is turned, sorry, tuned up by 10 half tones, what is a minor seventh, and detuned by 29 cents, what is really a lot. Phase distortion is at 63 and the waveform is a square, not a saw like with oscillators 2 and 3. Fractalization is adjusted to 1.78. And again, each component individually and in combination. modified the patch some minutes ago using its basic structure, its main idea, but changing the rhythmic melodic characteristics. Let's do the same again, but this time I am going to change the sound and add some more rhythmic components as well. I start with oscillator 1 and modify the amount of fractalization by engaging LF01. The rate shall be one quarter note and the LFO's wave shall be a square. At a modulation depth of around plus 3.20 I get a sound I like. <laughs> I change the LFO's rate to one eighth note, send the LFO's signal through the inverter and modulate phase distortion of oscillator 3 as well. In the next step I use LFO2. I leave it unchanged because it drives the mapping generators, but I can use its saw up output to modulate the fractalization of oscillator 2, turning the modulation knob completely to the left. <laughs> I 
disconnect LFO2 from oscillator 2 again to route the LFO's signal through the quantizer. I choose a 12-step pattern and connect the quantizer back to oscillator 2. I could continue nearly endlessly making changes, but one more last step shall be enough for today. I use the quantizer's output to modulate the amount of rectalization of oscillator 3 2. At about plus 1.40 I get a nice trickling 12-step sequence answering oscillator 2's sequence from the last step. Well, together with the shown possibilities of changing the rhythm, there is a nice set of ideas to continue with. Thank you for watching. Did you like this video? Was it helpful? Please consider subscribing, sharing and liking to support my work. Perhaps you would like more videos like this one? Well, I'd really like to produce more videos like this one and more often. But I have to do, let's say, normal, regular jobs to uh, make my living. By donating a small amount, you enable me to spend more time on producing videos for you. Thank you. Have a great day and a good time. Rolf.